If you remember a few videos back, I swapped an engine into my Chevy Cruze and I've put a couple thousand kilometers on it, two to three thousand on it, and I've noticed that there's a bearing noise and, or well, it seems to be a bearing noise from what I can tell. It's coming from transmission area. It always happens while engine's running and you have your uh, crankshaft spinning and the input shaft to the transmission spinning. The only time the sound goes away is when you push the clutch in, which is when the input shaft stops spinning. So I'm deeming it to be an input shaft bearing. Now, I had already changed this throwout bearing thinking maybe, maybe, just maybe that's what it would be, but sound didn't change whatsoever. So the only thing left is really input shaft bearing. So I bought a bearing kit out of Europe because these transmissions are not very popular in North America. So I had to actually source all my parts from Europe. So right now in this video, I'm going to be tearing this apart and attempting to change the bearings on all three shafts inside of this transmission. In case you're wondering, this is a Getrag M32 six-speed transmission from General Motors. Now, my understanding the way this works, um, I'll pull this bracket off, pull the shift tower out. Looks like it's just two bolts. That should slide out, maybe a little bit of rotating. And then it looks like the actual diff portion comes off on the back here with a few various bolts. Um, they're all inverted, inverted torques. And my assumption from what I've seen is that you can basically pull this unit off the back and your whole diff essentially comes off the transmission and you can leave that alone, leave it separate. So that way you don't have to mess with any of your, with any of your gear mesh. And then basically the case splits in half right here. So you flip this like this, and then you pull this off, and then you should have your three shafts sticking into this piece. That's my understanding from the diagrams I've seen, so I'm gonna give that a shot and see where that gets me. I don't know, 15, 20 bolts that come out and then it just comes right off the top here. Now, if you come inside here, I have the three races for each of the bearings that I'll have to be pulling out of the case. Haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna get that done yet. I know there's a special puller. Might be able to modify one I have to work for that. And if we come up on these, you can see these two shafts have snap rings that hold the bearings on. I believe these are actually the same size bearings. And then this one, I think this comes out, judging by the diagram I saw, I think this comes out and then you can pull the bearing off. And then I'll need to pull all three of these shafts out of the transmission with their shift forks. And then on the other side, I'll need to see what kind of disassembly needs to happen to get the bearings off on the other end of the shaft. Off camera, I got the shafts pulled out. I did break the blast the plastic casing on the input shaft bearing. So all my rollers fell out, but that's no big deal. It's garbage anyway. Um, I don't know if you can actually see it. If you come in on this bearing, you can see the pitting just on this race in here. A Lot of pitting on that one. That one's definitely toast. The input bearing, yeah, it's hard to see. I'll try and pull the races out and then show you. Cause I also saw Maybe you can see on this, oh yeah. There is the input shaft bearing and I'm gonna guess that's probably where my noise is coming from. Cause this is absolutely shot. Like there is a lot of pitting on that. So hopefully I can pull these races out decent and then uh, see what we're working with. So I'm slowly working away at getting these races out. Um, I actually went to Princess Auto, picked this up and then I modified it. Had to make it smaller so I could fit in the notch under the race and then space it out depending on which size race I was doing. And then I have a hook on the slide hammer that just barely fits into this. And with enough force, it does come out. And as you can see, here's the input shaft um, race. There's some good pitting there. 
come into this one. Real nice, real nice pitting on there as well. Same with the rollers out of the input bearing. I haven't looked at the other bigger bearings, but yeah, lots of uh, carnage here. So I am getting them out. Have three out so far. Hopefully the other half of the case will come out just as easy as this half. Bit of an update here, got all of the races out, both the transmission and the back case here. Um, funny thing about these uh, back three, they all have little uh, washers on the back of them. So uh, make sure you don't mess those up. I'm sure there are different thicknesses for different reasons to set different backlash and all that on all the gears. So don't want to forget those or mess them up. And then I actually went ahead, this is the input shaft, I went ahead and started pulling the bearing off of it. Just used a regular, regular bearing separator on a hydraulic press and this slid right off. No problems at all, so I will uh, find something this diameter and long enough so that I can press the new one on. So it's the next day now. Last night I managed to actually get this bearing on here. Uh, like I said, bearing separator underneath and then I put it in the press to get the old one off. Then I actually put this one in the toaster oven about 250 degrees, left it in there for like four or five minutes and then I stuck it on here and it didn't fall into place like I thought it would. So I just set it on there, grabbed this piece of pipe, fits perfect, and it was real light tapping, and it slid right down onto where it was supposed to be, right up against this gear. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the gear, or pull the bearing off of this end, and uh, hopefully get that one changed just as easily. found interesting about this shaft now the other two have snap rings on the end of them that hold the end bearing on now this one is actually different it has a bolt and it's a 10 mil allen head bolt and it has some sort of white compound i can only imagine that's some sort of thread locking compound so being that i don't want this to back out i think i'm gonna put red loctite on it and put it back in where it was but yeah just i i never saw this in any manual, any picture, any video on these transmissions. So I figured I'd make note of it, let you know that that's how that comes out. So yeah, a little bit of red Loctite and I'll put that back in. So I just finished disassembling this first shaft. Uh, I don't actually remember which gears this shaft corresponds to, but there's two shift colors on this shaft. Now, it's actually fairly simple. You pretty much just do it in segments and there's snap rings and then a lot of it has to get pressed off. So the way I have this, um, working my way up the shaft, I go this way and then I come back down and then I come here and then this is the snap ring that was at the very very top of the shaft and then this with the first bearing it was super tight uh what i ended up doing i clipped the plastic casing for all the rollers got all the rollers off and then i was left with this now this wasn't much of a lift here to try to grab onto with a puller so i ended up actually grinding a slot in it with a grinder so i could actually get a bearing puller on it so then once that one was off roller bearing with a gear um, and then you're moving into your synchros and your shift collar and you have another snap ring. And then you start moving into the next gear and again, snap ring and then roller bearing. And then yet another snap ring. Then this piece, I don't know what this piece is. 
That actually looks like a speed sensor pickup, to be honest, but I don't know for sure. Um, then shift collar, uh, shift collar, roller bearing, and the snap ring, and then this final bearing at the very end, I did the same thing. Snapped the casing, got the rollers out, and then you're left with this, and I was actually able to get enough of a bite on the lip here to press it out. So, yeah, everything's out. I have marked everything with a paint pen. To know that that side goes up. So basically just take it, stick it on. Don't flip it or anything like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the new bearing, press that onto here, and then basically just work my way up. So snap ring, roller bearing, put this on, this on, shift collar. This back on, then another snap ring, and then just keep going until I have the shaft 100% back together. So I didn't really update a whole lot on the second shaft. Honestly, the procedure is very similar to this first shaft that I did. Um, same thing, you just have a bunch of snap rings, everything presses on, it all comes off in order. The only difference was the gears themselves and the fact that reverse is actually on this shaft rather than that one, but it's the same idea. Um, it went just as smooth as the other one. All the bearings are on, all six of them are in. One of the hardest parts is actually trying to get all three of these shafts pieced together and then get all four of the shift forks in there as well and then all slid down together as a unit to fit in here. But now we have everything in here nice. Obviously there's nothing on the end here to hold these so they're, they're moving around a little bit. But I just put this in here so I could make sure that all my gears shift. And it looks like I have all of them. That's fifth and sixth. That's third and fourth. Let's see if I can use one hand. That's first and second. There's second. And if I come all the way out, I have reverse. That's that last one down there. Cause then there's nothing above it. Just reverse down there. So yeah. I have all seven gears and all my shafts are in. So really all that's left is uh, putting this all back together. So fast forward a few days, I have the transmission fully assembled again. Um, put that cap, put that half back on, put the final drive back on, um, have this back mount back on, and then obviously I have it back on the engine and all the wiring hooked up. Um, in the next few days, I'll be putting this back in the car um, I already posted a video a few a few months ago on putting it in, so I'm not going to bother putting that in this video. If you want to see that, go back a few videos and you'll find it. But uh, yeah, we'll put it in this weekend and then take it for a drive, see if it shifts good, what the bearing noise sounds like. Hopefully there is no bearing noise. And then uh, I guess we'll get to see if I'm any good at uh, rebuilding these transmissions. Well, the engine and trans is back in the car now. I have... Pretty much all the fluids filled. Um, oil's good. I got the coolant topped up. Batteries hooked up. Transmissions filled with two and a half quarts of Royal Purple 7590 GL4. And then uh, other than that, I think I should be ready to start this thing. So like I did last time, I'm going to cycle the key a few times, make sure I get good fuel pressure. Should be good to go. See what this sounds like. Clutch pushed in. Sounds good so far. Now I'll let out the clutch. That was the problem before. 
Yeah, I'm not hearing the issue that I was having before. So like I was saying before, the, uh, the input shaft bearing noise, completely gone with this rebuild, which is great. And then the other thing that was going on with it, um, primarily in first gear, if you put it in first gear and then as you're letting off the clutch and you can feel the car start to grab and start to move, the shift would move back about uh, probably that far. And then every time you push in the clutch, it would go back and it would just keep doing this if you were to let out the clutch and push it back in again. It would do it in a little bit in fifth and sixth as well, which is again common for the bad bearings on the shaft that has the sixth gear on it. Um, but it was real bad in first gear. And as you can see right now, I'll put it in first. And as I let out the clutch and start moving, it doesn't move at all. And it shifts super smooth. Like I am blown away with how much of a difference that rebuild made. Keep in mind, I put Royal Purple 7590 GL4 in it. So the Royal Purple might be helping, but it's actually incredible what a set of bearings did to this transmission. So I know this was a pretty specific video. Not a lot of people are really gonna be uh, looking to this video for a lot of helpful information because you're not all of you are gonna be rebuilding an M32 transmission. But for those that this did help, hopefully you learned a thing or two. Hopefully it taught you something. Um, I know I learned a lot. This is my first manual transmission rebuild and uh, it seems like it's going good so far. So we'll put some miles on it, make sure she's all good. And uh, yeah, if this helped at all, leave a, leave a comment down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next one.